Hi, I'm Kevin Kelly. I want to talk about the future of culture and what it would mean as we become more AI dependent. So the three things I want to talk about are globalism, acceleration, and generation. Those are the three trends that we're going to be seeing as AI infuses our economy and culture. First, globalism. Globalism is happening because we are making a technological superorganism. We're, we're basically, we're connecting all our phones and all our laptops and all the data servers in the world into one gigantic machine, one gigantic computer. It's like every phone is like a neuron in this world, the brain. And this mega computer is operating on a very large scale system really fast times. It's almost like it's its own huge super computer. It's one machine. And I want to emphasize the fact that while we might have different flavors, we can have Apple versus Windows, you know, iOS versus Android, the US content versus China, it's basically all still one machine. And these different flavors are basically different ways we interface with them. But behind all this is one machine. And that machine is the new platform that all technology is running on. Okay, we're making one large global planetary size machine and we're running all the digital technology of the world, including AI, on this new platform. And what we know from networks is that your own success, the success of your own efforts, really depends on the success of the platform. So we all want this platform to succeed. We all want this planetary machine to succeed because our success depends on it. So while there's also one machine, that means there's also one economy globally and there's one culture emerging, one convergence of all the things. You can ask anybody in the world today, any young person, and they're basically studying the same things in school, you know, chemistry, mathematics, science, history, and their own local language. It's the same curriculum around the world producing one global culture. There's a convergence on where we live and how we dress. People wear blue jeans and t-shirts and they live in a concrete room that has air conditioning, ideally running water and Wi-Fi. It's like Maslow's hierarchy of the basic ideas. We're all converging at the bottom the most essential things we want. We want a shelter, we want clothing, and we want Wi-Fi. And so that is the new global culture. And helping that along, AI is now going to make um, real-time translation happen, where we could put a little earbud in and I could talk to you in English, you would hear me in Chinese, you'd speak in Chinese back to me and I'd hear in English, and we would do this in real time. It's buried in our ear and it's no latency, it's happening. And once that happens, we have this entire ability to have virtual presence around the world together with augmented reality means that there is a global workforce for the first time. And that's coming to China as well. Whether Chinese residents working abroad because of the language barrier has been dropped or outsiders coming in working in China again, because the language barrier has been broken. This is a huge thing, one of the most important things that AI will be producing. So the second trend is, is acceleration, the acceleration of innovation brought about by these new technologies. It's accelerated in several different ways. One, this accelerated innovation is happening because the speed at which new inventions, new ideas are, sh are spread and shared is increasingly rapidly because of communication technologies and things like YouTube and Youku. And the new technology is also allowing us to use things like AR, uh, augmented reality, uh, virtual reality to train people by shadowing and puppeting their movements, by showing them a virtual description of how they should do something. So we have learning by doing with the new technology like a vision quest from Apple allowing us to actually use our full bodies and many people learn better with their full bodies rather than just reading things. 
They're much more kinetic learners. And so this also accelerates the pace of innovation and bringing those, those technologies into enterprises where you have the AI and its ability to perceive through a machine, through an eye of a robot, to perceive other things is also accelerating the pace of innovation and accelerating learning. And then we come to the AI assisted learning, which will, with chat GBTs and things like that, hugely accelerate the rate in which people can learn. Today, I believe that young people are learning more with chat GBT than they learn in school. What we learn from chat GBT is that answers become cheap. If you want an answer to something, you ask a machine. As answers become cheap, what becomes valuable is asking the right questions, having the right mindset. And that is really what's happening is that answers become really, really ubiquitous with these technologies. And that is accelerating the pace in which we do innovation. I claim that you're, if you're a young person, your job in two years has not even been invented yet. The, the, the job market, what you, what you are training yourself to do in school is, is going to change within two years of you graduating. And you'll be doing something that didn't even exist while you were in school. Therefore, learning how to learn will become the central skill to graduate. And all these things are accelerating the culture. So part of the culture is we expect innovation. And we expect innovation in technology. And part of the new global culture around technology is to expect innovations to happen in all parts of society. And these tools will allow them to happen. So the third trend in this technology of culture is generation, AI-based generative AI, where you are generating things. One of the main things we're doing is we're generating tasks. We're doing the AIs are going to allow us to do tasks that we don't like to do. That's the first thing. We get rid of the ones we don't like to do. We maybe don't like to count change. And so counting change and counting money cashiers will go away. We don't like to um, work in a factory like, like a robot, so we won't do that. The second thing is these AIs will generate things that we can't do, that we're unable to do by ourselves, and they'll be able to do. And then the third thing is these AIs will generate new things that we never even thought of doing. We didn't have an opinion. They're completely new beyond what we would have imagined ourselves. So an example of job that we don't want to do is drive a car around all day, drive a taxi around all day. So we have a Waymo, and that's happening here in San Francisco, and it'll happen in the rest of the world. So that's a job that is now being done, being generated by AIs that we don't want to do. And there are other kinds of jobs like that. Truck driving is a lot of um, jobs. A lot of that is things that people don't want to do. But it's going to take 10 years because we have to work out the infrastructure. You can't just bring a self-driving car into the same system. Everything has to be changed, so it's going to take some time, maybe another 10 years before it becomes really common. But that's the general direction. Then there are things that we can't do. So here's an AI robot in working in precision agriculture on a farm, and it's applying the exact amount of fertilizer and water to each individual plant. It remembers that plant. It says, I gave you this much, and it's inspecting each plant and giving it a precise amount. That's something no human farmer could possibly do. And this is a job that the AI robots can do, reducing the amount of fertilizer needed, increasing the health and yield of, of a farm. So, but most important of all these things that we're going to generate are things that we never thought of doing or knew that we wanted, new desires, new ideas. That is the real huge revolution that brought about these AIs, generative AIs, is generating the new things. They're not so good at that, but they're getting better. 
And I want to emphasize that AIs are plural. There's more than one kind. There are many kinds of intelligences, many, many kinds. And these intelligences will field a field of many possible intelligences of which humans are only one. So there are many different ways of thinking, many different AIs that we're going to make. And the important thing about these is that they do not resemble human-like intelligence. They're, they're, they're weirdly different. They're strange. They're alien. But they think differently. And that's their main benefit, is the fact that they do not think like humans. They have different ideas than we have. They can help us to think differently, as Steve Jobs says. And that is the source of innovation and wealth. So, I think there are many very important ideas, finance, economics, and science, that we cannot solve by ourselves as humans, that we need AIs to think differently with us to help us solve these problems. It's a two-step process. First, we invent the AIs to help us solve the problem. And so we also know from already a year and a half of using GPT and other AL, uh, LLMs is that the people who benefit most from these AI tools are actually the average and worst performing employees. So, 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 so these are not just for the brightest people. This is, these, these tools are going to help the least fortunate among us generate better work. That's really great news for us. So I think that the robots and AIs will be generating new jobs for us. Jobs that we didn't even know we could do, didn't even know we wanted to do, didn't even know were possible. That's the real frontier in this world of generative AI. So, those are the three trends in the global tech culture. Globalism. We are on a path of running on one machine, one planetary machine together. That is the new platform that all technology is running on. Sure, there'll be different flavors, different interfaces, maybe country by country, but behind it all is one large machine. And if you want to succeed worldwide, you have to be running on that platform. The second thing is this accelerated pace of innovation. And that acceleration is not happening in schools, it's happening outside of schools. And it's being fueled and accelerated by new technologies such as AI, such as virtual augmented reality. And the more we implement those, the faster this acceleration of progress will happen. And finally, there's generative, generative AI, which is going to generate first the efficiency, the, the, the task that we don't want to do, and then it'll help us do the tasks that we can't do by ourselves. And lastly, it's going to help us to create entirely new tasks that we do want to do as humans. And that's the revolution that we're headed towards so um, I'm really excited by the future, what it brings, and um, I, I think that we want to imagine this picture of where we're going. And so I want to leave you with a question, and the question is, having described this world of ubiquitous AI and globalism and acceleration, can you imagine a future in 100 years that you would like to live in? And try to imagine that because that's the only way we're going to make it happen, is for it to be imagined first and then believe that it's possible to get there. So thank you for your attention. I appreciate it.